In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at a Microsoft tool called Microsoft Forms. And it's a way to easily create surveys, quizzes, and polls. Now, some of you will recognize right away that this sounds a lot like Google Forms. And it is. This is Microsoft competing with Google by creating Microsoft Forms. So let's get started using Microsoft Forms. When I click Get Started, it takes me here to a sign-in page. And at this point, sign in to your Microsoft account. If you have an Office 365 account, I recommend that you use that. But if you don't, it should also work well with just your regular Microsoft or Outlook email address. Give me a minute to sign in, and then I'll resume the video. Once signed in, I get a welcome screen like this, and it gives me a button that says Create a New Form. I'm going to X out of that because you won't always see that. Instead, this is what you'll typically see when you go to Microsoft Forms. And I basically have two options. I can make a form or I can make a quiz for students in a school setting or an online course setting, something like that. Let's start with Form. So I'll click New Form. It opens up a window that I can use to title the form. And just as an example, let's say the school year is almost out and I would like some feedback from my outgoing students in my English language arts class. So I'll just call this end of year language arts survey. As you probably know, a form can serve a number of different purposes. It's very often used as a survey, but it's basically a way to collect information from a group of people. Next to the title of my form, I do have an option to add an image if I would like. I can upload my own images or pull in images from OneDrive, or I can search Bing. So I'll just do a search for language arts, and there's some good images that appear. I'll just use this one here, click Add, and that adds a little something to my Microsoft form. If I'd like to, I can click here where it says ABC. I know that's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in a little bit. But I can click on that to put in some alternative text. I'll just call this decoration. So if there are people who have trouble seeing and are using a reader, they'll be able to put their mouse over this and it'll just say decoration. Now I'll put in a description of this form, maybe something like, now that the school year is ending, I'd like to learn what I can do to improve for next year. Next, I'm just gonna add a question for my students to answer. So I click Add Question, and four different types of questions pop up. I can add what they call a choice question, multiple choice basically, a text-based question, a rating, a date-related question, and there's more. A ranking, which is kind of fun, a Likert scale, or a net promoter score. So I'll just choose a couple of these, but I hope that you'll check them out in more detail on your own. But I'll just choose this multiple choice option. I'm gonna close this pop-up and I'll just write my first question. It's gonna be, what do you think about the number of books we read in this class? Option number one, way too many. Option number two, way too few. And then I can add some other options. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, sometimes it's possible to have more than one answer. In this case, not so much. I want my students to pick one of these five options. But if you want them to be able to choose multiple possible answers, you can turn that on, and now they'll be able to put check marks on all that apply. Next, I can require my students to answer this question or make it so that they can skip it if they want to. Also, in these three dots, you'll see that it is possible to add a subtitle to this question and also to shuffle the options. So the possible answers would be shuffled so they don't look off each other's screens and copy each other. So that's question number one. I can just proceed to add another question. This could be a short answer, text-based question, or I'll just choose rating, and I'll just put in my question, how do you rate the quality of your learning this year in my class? Five-star scale, but if I want to, I can change that to three-star scale, or up to six, or whatever you'd like to do. The symbol could be a number, or it can be a star. So these are some really pretty good options that we have, and I've already built two different kinds of questions into my form. I could proceed to add more questions, a Likert scale, or a ranking, but I think you're getting the idea here of how Microsoft Forms works. So now, over here on the right, there's a tab that says Responses, and this is where I'll go to view the responses that my students submit, or the audience. It doesn't have to be students. Whoever the audience is, this is where I can go to see their responses. 
But the question is, how do they get the form? How do they put in their responses so that I can see them? So the way that works is up here at the top. I have some symbols here and the word share. Now the reason those are just symbols and not words is because I'm zoomed in a little bit too much. So I'm zooming out a little and you can see that there's a preview button and a theme button. Let's look at those and then how to share. So here, before I click preview, I might want to click theme and to choose a theme for my Microsoft form. I think I'll go with this cloud theme but I might choose skiing, I might choose a park, whatever makes sense. And I can also click to add one of my own. I can upload images or search images to add a theme of my own. But like I said, I think I'll stick with the cloud and the hills. I think that looks good. So now I can click preview to see what this form will look like for the end user. They'll be able to answer these questions and I should have changed it back to one possible answer only but they'll be able to answer these questions and then submit. Now, if I don't want this to be anonymous, I could have question one be, what's your name, right? That's possible to do. Now notice, even though I was just previewing my form, the response does show up. And this is a good example of what you'll see once people turn in their responses. So again, this is nice and everything, but how do people actually find my form? The way they do that is by me using the share button. So I click on share, only people in my organization can respond. That might be a problem. So I might need to change that to anyone with this link can respond to my Google form. Next, I copy the form and I can paste it wherever. I can paste it on my blog, into an email, onto my website or LMS. Whatever I'm using to share with the public, I can put this link there. There are other options though. If you don't wanna use a link, you can generate a QR code. If you're not familiar with those, QR codes can be easily scanned to take the viewer to the right place, in this case to a form. I can also embed the form using this embed code, and I can email it directly from Microsoft Forms. I could share this as a template, or I could share it with other people to collaborate. I could have someone help me build this Microsoft Form. Jumping back to Forms, just by clicking this button, you can see that now my survey is there. It's on my Forms homepage, and I can see that there's one response. Now, if I wanted to, I could create a similar thing, but make it a quiz. And you'll notice that this is very similar. I'll call this parts of speech quiz. I'm gonna skip adding a photo at this point and also a description, and I'll just go to adding a question. So far, this looks identical. But because this one is a quiz, it's a little different. For example, here's my question. What part of speech is the word pink? Option number one, it's a noun. Option number two, it's an adjective. And I'll stop there, but I could add more options. Because this is a quiz, look, there's an option for me to say, this is the right answer. And not only that, but I can put some feedback in for people that select this answer. So I'll say something like, yes, that's absolutely right. And if I want to, I could explain why it's right. And then up here on the wrong answer, I could click to explain why it's not a noun. Pink actually describes a noun, which makes it an adjective. So that way, even with an incorrect answer, I'm teaching my students. Another thing that makes this different is points. Because it's a quiz, there are points associated with it. I'll make this worth five points. And I could continue to build this quiz by clicking Add Question. So from there on out, it's pretty much identical to creating a form. But this one, like I said, is a quiz with points with right and wrong answers. Once again, I can look at responses here on the Responses tab and go from there. So I really like Microsoft Forms. I think it has a lot of potential. It's very similar to Google Forms, but it has its own charms, its own pluses and minuses. If you're primarily a Microsoft user, if you use Microsoft Office a lot, for example, you might prefer Microsoft Forms to Google Forms. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribe button. That will notify you whenever I post another video. And watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, please consider becoming a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below.